Good morning, folks. We're going to look at the tropical development, some cool videos, a cool interview, and two critical papers furthering important sun-driven science here on Earth. We're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find that it was yet another quiet day. Solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are calm, minor flaring was all we saw on the sun, and the Earth-facing plasma filaments remained stable despite the continued activity at limb prominences aimed away from the Earth. The flaring and eruptive activity is lessened at the moment. The GOES X-ray flux here shows that following the X-class flare on Halloween, we have struggled to get back up into significant flaring, small M-class events only, and the reason is because the northern sunspot has distended and lost magnetic complexity. The south-central spot is still growing, and we do have those new spots incoming from the left near the equator. These are likely where we'll be monitoring for flares more closely today. Looking to tropical development, Patty has gained organization in the North Atlantic. Luckily, even though this one is heading directly for Spain and Portugal, it is expected to weaken considerably before it does so. The main concern here would be for lasting rain causing more floods in the area. We also have that tropical system in the Caribbean. It is still expected to strengthen, tighten up, and head for Cuba, but models differ a bit after that. Some have the storm heading west towards Texas and Mexico, and some, like this one, have it sliding more north to the west of Florida. We'll be monitoring this one closely here in the coming days. We'll update the forecast when necessary. Up next, folks, it's our good friend Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille over at the Sky Scholar channel. It's one of the very few YouTube channels I fully endorse and recommend. He has two recent videos, including one from earlier this week. Both are on the advanced side of complexity, but present more indisputable proof that the standard model of stars, including the sun, is very wrong. Strap on your thinking caps for these ones. First up in the articles, we find an excellent paper confirming once again the solar storm effects on atmospheric electricity. We've seen several studies on how the atmospheric electric circuit is impacted by space weather, and this one further adds the delay in forcing from solar storm onset between 0 and 5.3 hours to work our weather via electrodynamic action. We also have a critical paper here on solar forcing of earthquakes. While years ago the focus was on magnetic fields, solar flares, or geomagnetic storms, we've recently seen a surge in papers like this one pointing to proton density as a key signal that the sun is working the crust beneath our feet. Excellent analysis here, and once again, the sun makes earthquakes. Lastly, on the article front, I did an interview with the same substack that reviewed my textbook, and it was published as we entered the weekend. It's linked below, along with all the other sources today, and it's a great little Q&A breakdown of common questions we get on the sun, earth, and disaster. I want to thank everyone who came to the first mini-conference at Observer Ranch yesterday. Next one's going to be November 30th. The ubiquitously positive reviews given are great to see and mean I engineered the process pretty well. Remember, winter rates are now in effect at pretty much all campgrounds in the United States, including ours. Come out and see us. We'd love to see you. ObserverRanch.com We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.